All right. Well, um, I know that we just learned a lot about um, tools for living with a chronic illness. And one of the things that Stephanie t was talking about was number seven, um, advocating for your health and becoming an empowered patient. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about today, is um, becoming, to empower becoming an empowered patient. So I hope by the end of today, you'll feel like this little boy, a superhero, ready to go to tackle what you've been given. Because it's hard, it's hard to know what to do, but we're all here for you, and we're gonna empower you because knowledge is power. And, and we have to educate ourselves to heal ourselves. So um, I, I love this because I, I think a lot of us feel like this sometimes um, when we're diagnosed with a rare disease. And it says, nurse, get on the internet, go to surgery.com, scroll down, and click on the are you totally lost icon, <laughs> OK? Because there are 7,000 rare diseases, and not everybody can be an expert at the disease. And it's very frustrating. And where can you find someone who's gonna understand and give you the best information possible? And sometimes that's hard to find and you have to do a lot of searching to find the right person for you. So I'm here today to talk about how you become an advocate. And, and what is an advocate? Well, all of you are advocates. You just need to take an active role in your health care, care um, effectively communicate and ask questions. And be prepared, be prepared for your appointments, be prepared to talk to your doctors, be prepared with questions. Be prepared to educate yourself to the best of your ability. So an advocate takes an active role. Your doctor is an ex expert on medical care, but you're an expert on yourself. They're not gonna know all about you. You know about you. But you also have to be respectful and know that they've been trained in medical care. Expect to be taken taking, um, seriously and treated with respect. You know, it's okay to fire a doctor. Anyone here fired a doctor before? Okay. Well, it's okay. I know a lot of us are like, oh, it's a doctor. We need to listen to him. But it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to, okay to ask for questions and learn more information. Um, but you have to be partners with your doctor. You know, we're all different. And, and, and one treatment that works for one person might not work for another person. So we need to find out what works best for you. And it requires shared decision, shared decision making, not just be given orders, okay? We don't want the doctor to say, this is what you need to do. You wanna ask the doctor, if your doctor says, this is what we need to do, you say, why? How is this gonna benefit me? How is this gonna hurt me? And, and does this work for me? Certain treatments might not work with your lifestyle and certain treatments might work for your lifestyle, but having those conversations are really important. And I know that's sometimes really, really hard when you're naked in a paper gown, sitting on the table like, hi, you know, and the doctor is peering down at you. Um, but you need to remember that it is an equal partnership, that you're creating this team to help better um, serve yourself and your needs. So you need to communicate and ask questions. Doctors will assume you don't understand if you don't ask questions. And I think there was a study done that um, uh, the average person doesn't ask three questions that they want to ask at each doctor's appointment. And questions to memorize is, what does this mean? I still don't understand. Can you please elaborate? Lots of times, doctors give us answers that we don't understand, but we're too ashamed to say, you know what? I really didn't understand that. Can you repeat it? Can you explain it in another way? But it's really important that you have them do that. And an advocate is prepared. You prepare before, during, and after your appointments. And when, you're, when people are active, organized, and prepared in their care, research shows they have better satisfaction with their visit. So how do you prepare for an appointment? When you schedule your appointment, first you need to find out, does your doctor accept this specific insurance? And you need to check that both ways. You need to call your insurance company to see if they accept it and the doctor's office because sometimes there's an old list that someone might have and they say that it's covered and then it's not and then you get this really nice great bill in the mail and you're like where did this come from so make sure you ask both ways where is the office located is it in the city if you have an eight o'clock appointment is it going to take you two hours to get there rather than a half an hour to get there where can you park does the doctor's office have a parking garage that's down the street um, are you going to need any help getting in and out of the office um, do you need to fax over any medical records? And if so, and you did, did they receive those medical records before you got there? Um, 
And then do you need to send over all of your records or just the new ones since you were last seen? And create a question list before you go to the doctor's office. So lots of times we have questions, but we don't take the time to write them down before we go. And then once we're being seen by the doctor, we forget. And then we leave with all these questions. <laughs> so, so some questions you might want to ask are, you know, why are you seeing this doctor? What are your symptoms? How are they affecting you medically? How are they affecting you emotionally? How are the symptoms affecting your life? Are there things you can do that you cannot do now? Are there things that you used to do that you cannot do now? If you are on or currently on a treatment of any kind, always ask, how does this treatment work? What are the side effects? What are the risks versus the benefits of being on this medication? And how is this effectiveness measured? Like, how do I know that this medication is working? And there's a really good, great resource on here. It's www.ahrq.gov slash app slash QB. It, is, um, it helps prompt you to ask the right questions. So you can go on that website, and if you're going to a certain doctor for a certain treatment, it'll give you a list of questions to ask, to kind of. And if you're advocating for others, you know, if you're advocating for a child, you know, preparing them to go to the doctor, if you're advocating for a teenager, maybe they want some time alone with the doctor, and even your spouse, you know, um, they might want to have a conversation with the doctor, a few minutes alone with the doctor without you. Maybe there's some things that they'd like to talk about they're not quite comfortable talking to you about yet, and that's okay. And then there's a checklist. Like, I, I feel like you should have like, this really long list and this huge suitcase that you're carrying behind you to become <laughs> prepared for the doctor's appointment. Um, a care notebook, which I'll go over in a few minutes. Um, a li your list of questions, your list of symptoms, blank paper and pen for notes, your medical history, your pharmacy information, any changes to your medical record. Your list of medications, prescription and over-the-counter. So if you're taking any supplements or anything else, your doctor needs to know about that. Um, forms that you fill out, previous doctor information. Always bring a family member or friend. You know, I, it's sometimes hard when your doctor's appointment and they, they drop a bomb on you and you don't hear anything that they say after you get that diagnosis. Or, so it's always good to have somebody there who can help you. And any other appointment you think might think, any other information you think might be important to take with you. And I have this checklist on creating a care notebook. So one of the most important things is to be organized. Okay, one of the most important things is that you're organized for, with all of your medical care. And it's hard because every time you go to a doctor, they give you this piece of paper when you leave, and the next thing you know, your office is just stacks and stacks of paper, and you're like, what does this mean? So you need to organize it in some way, and there's no right or wrong way of organizing it. Um, I actually have a sample of a notebook that I created um, that you can pass around and look at. Um, so just getting yourself organized. So these are the materials that I would use to create a binder, a care notebook. Um, there's also online versions if you want to go online and use different apps. It's up to you. Just the most important thing is to be organized and know what's going on with your medical care. So you can use an, a one and a half inch or larger binder, dividers and pockets, Put in a calendar, business card pages, CD holders, loose leaf paper, plastic fold sleeves, sticky nose tabs, and a pencil case with pens and pencils. And there's different sections that you can organize. So the cover page that has your, you know, if, if you were in a major catastrophe, like contact information on who to contact, section for questions and notes, a care log to log where you would put um, your vital signs, diet, sleep patterns, any daily activities you need to feel, you need to share with your doctor. Because lots of times you'll go to the doctor and you'll say, you know what, 
my stomach hurts all the time. And what will the doctor say to you? He'll say, well, when does it hurt? So if you tracked it for two weeks and brought it in and said to the doctor, like, here is what I've been eating. This is when my stomach hurts. It might help them figure out what's causing your stomach ache. So trying to keep tabs on, um, you know, when you're tired or your sleeping pat patterns, if you're having insomnia, um, to keep track of your diet and when that insomnia is happening, or if you're the opposite and you're sleeping and tired all the time, you could write that down with your diet and, and your energy level and what you've been doing, and maybe the doctor can help figure that out. Your medication list. Keep all your current medications um, that you've taken in the past. Make, make sure you include how much and how often that you take that medication. A calendar to keep track of appointments you have and remind yourself when to schedule the next appointment. One of my pet peeves about going to the doctor is when they're like, come back in six months or come back in a year, but they don't call you with the reminder, so you have to remember. And when you see 12 or 13 specialists, it gets to be a little bit difficult to know when that is. So you can use the calendar to keep track of that. Um, medical history, write down your personal and family medical history, and also a list of your allergies and immunizations. I like to get a copy of the one um, from the doctor's office. So if I have a person coming with me and I have their copy, I can just hand it to them and they can fill out the paperwork. You know, every time you go to the doctor, you have to fill out the same questions with the same information. So if you have it in your notebook, it's just easy to jot it all down with, rather than having to remember it all the time. Hospitalizations, keep a list of all the times you've been admitted and discharged, your discharge summaries here. Medical contact list. And this is one thing that I love to do with business cards for the business card holder is get a business card from every physician that you see, even the ones that you don't see anymore. Keep their business card. You go get a, a scan done at a certain hospital, get the business card. Put them all in a sleeve together. And then anytime you need to contact the doctor or get records, you have that contact information right there. So it's a real easy way of collecting the business cards. Yeah. Yeah, I have a box. Yeah, <laughs> you put them in. Yeah, yeah, so this would help relieve some stress just getting it a little bit organized. And there is no right or way wrong to do this. You might say, you know what, I don't need this part or this part, and that's okay. It's just getting organized for what you think you need to help you be better prepared for doctor's appointments and for you to, to know about your own self, right? You know, what is your normal blood pressure? What is your normal temperature? Or what are your normal blood work? What should that look like? What is it? You should, you should know that information. So when you're getting another report, you can say, oh, this looks like it's high, this looks like it's low. You know, really pay attention to those things. Um, you can also keep a, a second a section for medical specialists. You keep a separate section for each specialist you see. That's where you can place the after visit summaries that they print out and give to you. Um, test results in labs. Keep a list of all your test results in labs. Um, you can also use the CD holders to hold your medical Im imaging studies, so you can keep all of them in one place. And this is a great way um, to keep track of insurance as well. Um, keep copies of your insurance cards, track how much you've been billed and how much insurance is covered, and what you've paid and when. Because lots of times you get bills and you might have already paid that copay or you might have already paid that bill and they're sending you another bill already. So you need to be proactive and know what you've paid, what you haven't paid, what insurance is covering, and it's really difficult when you're in the midst of a crisis and not feeling well to have to deal with all that. So if you can get it organized, it makes it a lot easier to know what you owe and what you don't owe. And when you need to keep, it, when you need to contact the insurance company if there's a discrepancy about a bill, keep a log of who you spoke with when and what you spoke about. Because if you ever have any kind of problems in the future, you can always go back to that. You know, I called on this date. This is who I spoke to. This is what we talked about. And it'll help get your problems resolved quicker. And research articles. You can keep the latest research articles and abstracts of articles to share with your providers. Because, you know, your doctors don't know everything. They may not know that a recent paper came out about your disease. So if you come across this journal article, feel free to take it with you to your doctor's office to have them explain it to you or talk about it and how it's going to impact you. And for more information and sample download forms, you can go on Global Gene's website and there's a toolkit called Becoming an Empowered Patient, a tool for the undiagnosed, but 
there you can find um, more information with downloads on how to set up these sections of your care notebook. And once you do that and you have all your materials together, you're ready to have your meeting. So you arrive 15 to 20 minutes early to a doctor's appointment. And you know, remember that, that this is a partnership and your doctor is an expert on medical care, but you're an expert on yourself. Um, make sure you refer back to your question list to stay on task. It's okay to bring up financial issues with your doctor. If you have questions or concerns about paying for a medication, there might be other resources that they can help um, share with you. Make sure your friend or family member takes notes. Repeat and what you heard and confirm you heard it correctly. Because I know when I go somewhere with my husband, I hear one thing sometimes and he hears another. <laughs> so we just want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. The patient's on the same page as the provider. That you really say, okay, this is, this is what I think that we're talking about. This is what I'm going to do. This is how often I'm going to take this medication. This is how many times a day. Go over that. Then clarify any unanswered questions and reach an agreement about a treatment plan. The treatment plan is for you and it's something that you need to be active in deciding that this is best for you. Ask for instructions on next steps. So what are you supposed to do next? When is the next time you're supposed to come back? Do they have any other extra materials for you? Pamphlets, videos, anything that you can learn more. How do you access your medical records? A lot of doctors are going to electronic medical records. How do you get access to those? If you don't have access to the internet, how can you um, get access to those medical records? Make follow-up appointments and make sure all your prescriptions have been called into the pharmacy before you leave the doctor's office. So you don't have to do that wonderful thing when you show up to the pharmacy and they don't have it. <laughs> And don't forget to follow up. Review all, all the materials you brought home. Add all the new information you receive in your care notebook. And if you have any questions or concerns, reach back out to your doctor. You know, he's your partner. It's okay to call him and leave a message and have a nurse or somebody call you back so you can go over your questions. And then also to prepare, um, not just for appointments, but just to be prepared in life, a lot of people will use medical IDs um, that will help in an emergency situation. So there's all different kinds out there, and I'm not going to recommend one over the other. Um, there's ICE for your phone that's an app that's in case of emergency. It stands for in case of emergency. So a lot of emergency responders know about ICE. So if you were to pass out on the floor and they pick up your phone and they see that you have ICE, they'll know who to contact. You can use medical alert bracelets. The only thing I would say is if you do choose to use the bracelets, they make now, some now that look so much like jewelry that it might be hard for a first responder to notice the difference that it is a medical bracelet versus regular jewelry. So even though you might not want to wear something that stands out, it might be good to have one that looks like a medical alert bracelet so it's easier for the doctors to see. And some of these, um, there's different companies, they do it in different ways that it just might say one thing or it'll have a code that will go to all your medical information. So when that first responder comes, he will have contact with all of your doctors, with all the things that you're allergic to, and everything else. And there's all these little chips that you can put medical information on. You can put them on your seatbelt, so if you were in a car accident, they would know who to call, who to contact, and what was wrong with you. You can put it on your shoe, yeah. Yeah, we use that for the, the kids, but adults can use it too, um, to put it on your shoe. So first responders can know. And it's just a great way to sort of be proactive about your medical care. And it's easier for people to know what's going on in the future. And with that, I thank you. Do you, anyone have any questions? This is terrific. Okay. So did you mention, did there are some online ones? Is this is great, but also, have you tried any online? I have not. OK, so I'm old school paper. so. <laughs> I have not tried it. Another one of my friends is actually just made an app because her son had um, a heart transplant when he was like three years old, and she found that there was nothing really that did absolutely everything. So it's, it's called the Lionheart app, and I don't know if it's completely done yet, and I haven't tested it, so I don't know. There was a fellow who was supposed to speak at your summit, but he was injured himself. Yeah, I know. I was actually supposed to meet with him, so I didn't get to. 
hits. Yeah, and he has hits. So I, I have not. But I know that people have tried other ones, and certain ones are good for certain parts. So I think it's just all on your needs, and you have to try them out. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and also another good thing is if you have a smaller notebook just with some information that you can leave at work, with someone that you know at work, so if something happens to you at work, they know what to do in case of emergency. Um, you know, your friends and family members. Because sometimes it's hard to talk about it, but if you could just have, you know, a little packet, you know, hey, I have this rare disease, here's some information. Um, so if, in case of emergency, this is who you call. And this, this is the information you should give to the first responders as well. Um, and then I want to say, what, what does everyone else do? What do you do to stay organized with your medical care? Nothing. An envelope. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard. It's hard to find the time when you're juggling everything else to find the time to organize it. But like I said, even if it's just little things to organize, it, it'll make it a little bit easier. I use an envelope too. I just shove that little Yeah. Or magazine, a lot of times there's a lot of articles in there. And that I like the idea of, I don't think I ever saw that section before. Okay. And um, that is really helpful because you, I rip things out of magazines, you know, I have a pile of articles. Um, so I think that's great that you can just show your doctor and say, well, what do you think about this? Yeah. Because there's some things that you have to be careful with with research articles, you know, like how many patients were involved in the study, what year the study was done. So those are things that your doctor can help navigate with you. Um, if it was a case study, just on one person, and how reliable is that information, especially just with you. So. We also got to hope that the doctor's familiar with the studies and other information coming out. Right. Right, and that's why I wouldn't hold it against the doctor, even if the doctor specializes in your rare disease, if he hasn't seen something in the last three or six months because things come by and they might not have seen it yet, but they're very thankful when you do bring it to them and they will be able to explain it to you and how it's gonna help you or what it means for your future. Yeah. The doctors came by, they were interested, everybody was, everybody just knew finally what it was. Yeah, that's because awesome. Because they treat you different than they do. Yeah. They didn't know I couldn't get up right or I had to do it this way. That's they, a great idea. Yeah, yeah it is. is. You have to share with them. You're educating people too. Yeah. And that's right. Yeah, it was very frustrating. They go, what is it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's nice when you have something that you can give and say this is what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. I know some people that made business cards, business cards with information about their disease so they can just give it to providers or people at work when they just get sick of talking about it. Right, right, yeah, definitely. And that's one reason why I like, there is one medical alert bracelet that I really like online because it has a code and it's connected to all your medical information. So if anything happens to you when you're traveling, um, they just call this number, give them the code, and they have access to all of the doctors that you see, all of your medical information, and it, it's really helpful. Well, thank you. This is terrific.